In our last episode, we helped the Putnam family at Lewis and Sons kill a bunch of ghouls nesting at Orwell Orchards. These ghouls had been harrying travelers along the road to Flatwoods for some time, and Paladin Romani thought that by getting rid of these ghouls, the Brotherhood would buy itself a lot of goodwill with the people in Appalachia. At the same time, we became an initiate for the Brotherhood ourselves, well, a probationary one, at any rate, and we recruited a new member, one of the two sons of the Putnam family, either Marty Putnam or Colin Putnam, depending on our choice. Now that we are a full member of the Brotherhood of Steel, Paladin Romani has a much more serious mission for us. And to learn what it is, we need to head back to Fort Atlas to check in with her. I need to have Valdez take another look at my armor. Ah, 2,000 miles of hiking has put some real wear on it. Hello, Initiate. Congratulations on officially joining our ranks. I apologize that we aren't able to do an official ceremony right now, but as previously stated, something more important has come up. I've been informed that there is an independent settlement that needs our help. A group of Blood Eagle Raiders are extorting the villagers and taking their supplies. The village's leader, Jenny Brown, has more information. You can find her at their settlement, a camp made up of tree houses that they call the Retreat. What do we get in return? We aren't asking the settlement for anything in return. They're going to need their supplies, and our goal is to return them. We need the people of Appalachia to know that we're here to help. Earning favor with the people of this region will benefit us in the long run. That in itself is a reward. But if you happen to get any additional supplies that the Blood Eagles have procured, you can bring them back here. Really? This is my first mission? Isn't there something better to do? Something better than helping those who can't help themselves? Where's your sense of compassion? Aiding civilians is part of the Brotherhood's mission here in Appalachia. We need to show them our goodwill. You got it, boss. I appreciate your eagerness to help others, but please, call me Paladin Romani. We now have to head to the Mire to speak with members of this retreat. We find the retreat at the Treehouse Village, or at least what used to be called the Treehouse Village. We remember when we explored this place in my live stream, we learned that the Free States had occupied the place for a time before they disappeared. Looks like after Wastelanders, a bunch of villagers have moved in, led by someone named Jenny Brown. Heading upstairs, we find a bit of the lore that remains from when the Free States was here. In one of the rooms with a red door, we find a desk with Lorne's terminal still on it. It's locked with a skill level one lock. Inside, we find four entries. September 19th, 2081. The raiders chased us for almost two hours before my daughter Darlene spotted the treehouse. We scrambled up the rope ladder, praying they wouldn't follow. We crouched low and waited until the raiders passed beneath. That's when we opened fire. Our elevated position gave us a huge advantage, and we took them down in seconds. I don't think they even knew where the shots were coming from. It was at that moment we knew that our Free States group had found a home. September 21st, 2081. While the thought of living in a makeshift tree fort seemed clever, we didn't realize the huge amount of work we'd have ahead of us. Caroline volunteered to hike down to Gavin McCullough's cabin to see if his group wanted to join up. Before the war, Gavin was a master carpenter, so he'd have the skills and tools to get the job done. Fortunately for us, his group agreed to give us a hand. With their help and Gavin's know-how, we had a solid platform built within a day. We were exhausted, but Gavin promised that the best was yet to come. October 30th, 2081. It's been a little over a month and our dream of a tree fort has turned into more of a treehouse village. Gavin designed a way to use other nearby trees to build a series of interconnected platforms. It was pretty damn clever. Everyone would have their own platform with living quarters and a roof over their heads. We would be close to each other, but each group would still have some privacy. Finding that child's treehouse was turning out to be the luckiest thing that ever happened to us. November 19th, 2081. I woke to gunshots and Gavin yelling that we were under attack by raiders. We ran to the windows and returned fire. We were able to run the raiders off, but the damage was done. We had lost Darlene. It was clear that our treehouse village wasn't enough to keep everyone safe. The raiders would keep coming, and then slowly, we'd keep dying. We decided to give up our home and move on, to look for somewhere safer. 
I'm going to leave a few traps behind as a parting gift, just in case these raiders return to finish the job. A little payback for what they did to my sweet Darlene. We recall that before Wastelanders, this place did have a bunch of traps everywhere, but it looks like this new group of settlers cleared them all out, made a few changes, and moved on in. We track down the leader of this new group by crossing a sky bridge leading to another home. Here we find Ginny Brown sitting on a couch. Hello there, stranger. What can I do for you? I'm an exterminator. Hear about your raider problem. Oh, my. Well, I was hoping that this all could be solved without violence. But beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. I'm here on the behalf of the Brotherhood. Well, aren't you just the cutest Brotherhood member I've ever seen? My name is Jenny Brown, and I'm the mama hen of this little family here at the retreat. Lately, my kin have been harassed by a woman named Dagger and her blood eagle raiders. She's causing all my people to go hungry and threatening our lives. You should take some time to talk with some of my people. I'm sure they have some useful information about Dagger that they can share with you, you know. Make friends? But I don't want to. We're not just friends here, we're family. Everyone could use another person looking out for them. No thanks. Just tell me where I can find Dagger. Oh, I'm sure most of your job is knocking down doors and saving the day. But wouldn't it be nice to take a moment to talk to some kind-hearted people, hmm? I think it will help you understand the stakes better. And besides, like I said, They've got some information for you. I'll be off to talk to them then. Great. Let me know if you need anything else, darling. Now we gotta track down some of her people. There are three villagers we have to talk to. It doesn't really matter which order we talk to them in. And none of them are named. We'll start by talking to this villager. Forgive any attitudes from us. We've got people going hungry here. What more can you tell me about Dagger? I run the storehouse here and have to deal with her lieutenants that come to collect every week. They have some sort of fancy rocket launchers that would blow this place to smithereens if given the opportunity. Her and those blood eagle raiders are definitely too tough for us to handle on our own. Something's got to be done about her. And I hope you're the one to do it. What made you want to live in a treehouse? You kidding me? It's got to be the coolest digs you can get in the apocalypse. I'm proud to call this place my home, and these people my family. Why did you join Jenny Brown? I was surrounded by a group of vicious mole rats when some members of Miss Jenny's family found me. They saved me. I figured I could use some more protection from all the nastiness in this world. Now, we just need to deal with Dagger. I gotta go. You go get that dagger, and bring me back my Instamash. Please. So these blood eagles come and demand food from them every week, and they come armed with fancy rocket launchers. I wonder where they got those. For the record, we can't actually give her any Instamash, even if we find some with dagger. Even if we have some in our inventory, we can't give her any. We find the next villager on a platform next to a birdcage. I don't know who you are, but... Hi. Don't cause any trouble around here. I will be able to find you. Do you have any useful information about Dagger? I went out hunting shortly after one of her weekly collections and tracked her lieutenants to see where her hideout is. I lost their trail and wasn't able to get the exact location. But I do know that they're somewhere to the southwest. If you find her, kill her. Her and her damn blood eagles are taking our food Water, stim packs, everything. All in exchange for allowing us to keep our lives. What do you like about living here? Being high up in these trees makes me feel safe. Plus, everyone looks out for each other here. And we do what we can to make the best of it. If you can just help get rid of Dagger, we can go back to living in peace. How did you meet Jenny Brown? My partner and I were holed up in a building when we heard some people come inside and start looking through the place. We were worried that we would have to fight. But instead, Miss Jenny welcomed us into her group with open arms and offered us a place in the family. 
Lance. I've got to be on my way. Please, help us give that dagger what she deserves. So Dagger and her Blood Eagle thugs are somewhere to the southwest. We find the last guy down on the ground, walking the boardwalk, traversing the swamp. Hey there. Sorry, we're a bit wary of strangers right now. I'm here about Dagger. What do you know about her? I know that she's got numbers, and she's smart. She's got people tracking our trade routes, and they've been harassing our caravans. It's making the settlers not want to trade with us for fear of losing their own people. I don't blame him either. Dagger's people are making it harder and harder for us to have the supplies when she comes to collect. Honestly. You should leave. I think she just wants an excuse to kill us off. Sorry. How did you end up here in the retreat? Miss Jenny heard of all the people in Appalachia and thought it would be a good spot for some consistent trading opportunities. We came across all these abandoned tree houses and it seemed like the perfect place to set up our little haven. It allows us to keep our independence while still making it easy to trade with the settlers. Sure is damp out here. Mostly. I gotta get going. I believe in you to give that dagger what she deserves. So these raiders really aren't gonna let up. They'll keep squeezing and squeezing these settlers until they kill them all. Something has to be done. Heading back to Jeannie Brown. I hope you enjoyed getting to know us. We're a peaceful people. We don't want to bother or be bothered. So, will you help us? You've built a tight-knit family here, Jeannie. That's rare in the wasteland. I'm glad you're able to see how special my people are. Family is the most important thing that you can have. Especially in the wasteland. I will do anything that I can to protect mine. Is there anything else I need to know about Dagger? Other than she's insane and a manis, she has this loyal group of lieutenants that are willing to protect her with their lives. I'm telling you, if they didn't follow her everywhere she went, I'd have already tried to put her six feet under. Well, I suppose I have to help. Well, I'm not one for telling people what to do, but I'll take the help regardless. Be careful. Underestimating Tagger may prove to to be dangerous. I'd be happy to help. Thank you. I knew you'd be as sweet on the inside as you are on the outside. Please be careful. Tagger and her lieutenants are dangerous folk. With that, Ginny stands up to walk around, and we can go find this Dagger. But before we do, we can explore the treehouse though it's so sprawling and covers so many varying levels that it's really hard to piece together the layout of this place in a video like this. So instead, I'll just highlight the points of interest. There's plenty of scrap and recipes lying about. We can walk away with a ton of early game stuff. We find a number of workbenches that we can freely use. On the western side of the treehouse, we find a bridge leading to a shack that's locked with a skill level zero lock but inside isn't anything remarkable, just a little bit of scrap and some lockers. Against the northern side of the shack is a section locked up with a security gate, but we can't get back there. The door is inaccessible, and peering back there, we really don't see anything of value anyway. There is an armor workbench here though, but that's about it. In one of the big buildings, we find a dining room. On the wall is a child's painting, Home Sweet Home. Looks like they've got kids here. Then, by crossing a rope bridge to the south, we find another shack with a red door. Heading inside, we find uh, a vampire asleep in bed. Scrawled on the wall behind her, we read the following. I'm critical of everything, but hold myself to the highest standard. S.M. We see that the vampire lying in bed is named Sarah Matthews. Waking her up to talk with her. You want to stop by for a chat? What do you think about the Brotherhood? Brotherhood of Steel? I mean, Steel is cool and all, but kind of lame, right? Should have been like, Brotherhood of Terror, Brotherhood of the Night, like a Dark Brotherhood or something. Why are you wearing a vampire costume? Can't you tell that I'm the vampire queen of the universe? (laughs) Wear what you want, be whoever you want to be, regardless of what other people think. I mean, sure, vampire queen of the universe, but... I mean, she's not really a vampire. She can't turn into a bat. I mean, she can pretend to be whatever she wants to be, but she can't actually be whatever she wants to be. Eh. And what happens when somebody else wants to be the vampire queen of the universe? Are they going to share power or battle it out with their fangs? 
But, but yeah, be, what, be whatever you want to be. What do you like about living in the retreat? Living in a treehouse makes me feel like some sort of fantasy character. I'm happy to have found a place where I can be who I want to be. I do like to visit Crater from time to time, though. Rara and Gale are the best. A settler who is fond of raiders. Makes perfect sense. I've got to go. Cool beans. Cool, cool beans. We see that this uh, Sarah Matthews vampire lady has a bunch of toys all over the place. We find a model robots and a shelf covered in toys. We have an option to find a bobblehead here, as well as a magazine. Well, that was uh, a nifty, rather eccentric character. I struggled for a while trying to make sense of this character within the greater scheme of the retreat as a settlement and this quest for the Brotherhood as a whole. But I read that this character, Sarah, was actually named after a Bethesda developer and QA tester named Sarah Matthews, who passed away after the game's release. It appears as if this character was placed in the game as an homage to her. Also of note, Sarah mentioned the Dark Brotherhood, which is a reference to the Elder Scrolls. Also by Bethesda, the Dark Brotherhood is a group of assassins. On one of the floating platforms, the one with the jukebox, we find a note next to a lantern, Brewmaster Grocery List. Big problem, we're running out of ingredients for brewing beer. Here's the hit list, get John to prioritize these over all that other crap on the next run. Mute fruit, tick blood, Canned coffee, Brahmin milk, blight, razor grain, snaptail reed, and cranberries. Well, they may be being harassed by raiders, but at least these guys have their priorities straight. No point in outliving the apocalypse if you can't enjoy beer. And then lying on a coffee table in one of the lower western houses is a note, The Dagger Dilemma. I'm sick and tired of Jenny caving to Dagger and those other psycho blood eagles. They've taken so much from us, and it keeps What's getting worse. We are running out of ammo, food, clean water, chems. At this rate, we'll all be dead within the year. Hell, if this keeps up, I might have to stop by Dagger's Den and sign up. Better than starving to death in this stupid tree. So we're looking for a place called Dagger's Den, and things are so bad that even the settlers are thinking of becoming raiders. Yikes. Well, we've got to put a stop to this. All of the information we gathered points to a location to the southwest. Heading that way, we pass through the mire, cross some train tracks, until eventually we find the den nestled in some hills. Looks like there's a big front gate that we could walk right into, but that's probably a trap. I wanted to find some other way, so I crawled around behind the place. This brought me to the rocks overlooking Dagger's Den, and from here we can sneak around the fence to find a lookout that we can use to fire down upon the raiders. But before I had a chance to, I was found by some raider dogs. Getting goosebumps. Looks like we've found the lookout tower. From up here, we get a clean view of the entire den, but it looks like most of the raiders are dead. Moving down cautiously, we walk around and see that sure enough, most of the blood eagles are dead. Looks like another player on the same quest came through and killed them all for me, but heading deeper into the den, we find a turret. We see a big structure in the middle of the den. There are two mailboxes just outside. Heading inside, we see that the Blood Eagles are already dead. This must be their primary rec room and dining hall. We can move upstairs to loot the kitchen and a bunch of containers, but there's not much here. Heading out, we find a yellow door that's blocking our path towards our quest marker, but the door is locked with a skill level one lock. However, we can use the crates and barrels dotting the place to leap over this fence. We see a couple of shacks over here, and it looks like there is at least one enemy still alive. Dropping down, we see a door to the left that leads to a cave and a shack to the right. Stepping into the shack. I can feel it. Something close. We can get rid of a blood eagle. Looks like there may be one more, but after a while, she lost my scent. On a box next to a chair in this building is the Blood Eagle Code. The Blood Eagle Code. Blood Eagles are loyal only to themselves and other Blood Eagles in that order. Vaulters, settlers, and raiders either join us or die. 
A blood eagle's power is short-lived if they don't stay hungry. Only the strongest survive and rise to the top, only to be cut down by an usurper or mutineer. And so, the cycle continues. Torture is the course of action when a member falls out of line, or sometimes just for fun. A true blood eagle has an unrivaled thirst for blood. It seems the apocalypse has had a detrimental effect on our collective sanity. Okay, but at least they're sane enough to realize it. Honor means nothing. Survival means everything. Death is the answer. I don't know. I've found that truly insane people don't like it when you question their sanity. It's only people who somehow think that being insane is edgy and cool who describe themselves as insane. At any rate, we find another door leading back outside that's blocked with a chain. We can remove the chain to open the door and our path out is now open. When ready, we can move to the cave and open the door to Dagger's Den. We arrive in darkness. Moving down the corridor, we pass through a doorway. We see movement to the left. Looks like there's an arena of some sort down there. There are scrap walls in our way, but as we move around them, two enemies come through another passage to the north. They're aware of us, and so we have to act. But that just alerts the rest of them, and they come running for us. Looks like... That's almost everyone here dead. We don't have time to explore, for there are more enemies deeper in the complex. Moving into the northern room that the two men came from, we can sneak around to find the others. We hear them talking. I hate this place. I hate goddamned everything. And there we go, that's everyone dead. At last we can explore this cave. Here we are in the northern room. It appears to be a workshop. We find all sorts of workbenches all over the place. There are containers and boxes filled with scrap and ammunition. There's a fusion core lying on the ground next to some barrels, and a mannequin by a post with a knife stabbed into it. Exploring this scrap structure, we see a staircase leading down to the ground and a doorway off to the northeast. A rope bridge traverses the cave floor to the west. Here we find an elevated shack guarded by a tripwire. Moving inside, we can loot a desk, narrowly avoiding the trap where we find the throne room key. And lying on the desk is a note, Brianna Hawk's diary. Now, this diary is part of a much greater story. What Bethesda did here is they took a place that before Wastelanders was called Hawk's Refuge, and they kind of completely threw away the story here and turned it into Dagger's Den, which is a bit of a problem because Hawk's Refuge is directly linked to the Sunday Brothers, which is a story I've been meaning to tell here on the channel and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Thankfully, I captured footage of Hawk's Refuge as it looked before Wastelanders, and so I'm going to wait to read Brianna Hawk's diary until I publish that video on the Sunday Brothers so I can tell the story as it was meant to be told. Moving out of this room, we see that the throne room key opens that door we found on the ground to the north. But we never got a chance to finish exploring the room that appeared to have an arena. Moving that way, we pass a crate with another fusion core on it. Turning right, we find a small cave. Before Wastelanders, this had a Wendigo inside, back when it was Hawk's Refuge. But now, it's the barracks, filled with crates and beds. There is an end of dungeon steamer trunk here, and a few ammo canisters. Heading down to the ground, we see a bunch of cages under the scrap structure. There's a caged off section with some weightlifting equipment in it. And near to the cages is a tunnel that leads back to the arena. There's an outhouse here, but it's empty, though as we try to walk away, 
Rad Rush comes out to play. Moving up the ramp, we arrive at the arena and we see that they were battling chickens. There's a desk here where apparently the Blood Eagles took bets on the cockfighting. Heading into the arena, we see that a fight has recently ended and there is one victor. A chicken lies dead on the ground and the winner stands over its body. That's it for the cave. Heading back into the northern room, we can make towards the throne room door. But as we get close... Dagger sent me to come take care of you. You're gonna pay for slaughter... Before he can finish his sentence, we open fire. This must be one of those lieutenants that the settlers kept writing about. The ones who came to the retreat on Dagger's behalf to demand food and resources. They wear power armor and they wield these crazy rocket launchers we read about. Thankfully, the rockets don't go around obstacles and we can easily avoid them. With the lieutenant dead, we can enter the throne using the throne room key. On the other side of the door, we travel down a walkway to arrive at another walkway lined with candles. However, when I arrived here in my game, everyone was naked. Okay. We've got a couple of lieutenants here, all naked and Dagger, presumably sitting in her throne. I had to leave the cave and come back to get them to spawn with their clothes on. Somebody needs to get me a drink. Well, well, well. I see the Brotherhood has finally sent one of their pawns Nothing to retrieve my weapons. Bring down Dagger's crew. <laughs> because you've impressed me by taking out my crew, I'll allow you to say a few last words. Choose them carefully, kid. How did you know I was Brotherhood? You mean besides the fact that you waltzed in here all high and mighty? Oh, I've got Let's eyes everywhere. I like to stay informed. Weapons? What weapons? I'm here on behalf of the retreat. Aw, oh, shit. You mean you didn't know about the weapons? The crate they came in may have had a Brotherhood of Steel insignia on them. <laughs> but they're ours now. Don't even think about walking into my place and making demands, either. <laughs> Stupid I won't villagers. let you take these weapons from us. How did you even get these weapons? My gang and I came across a small group of raiders and... Oh, I couldn't help but notice these beauties sitting around. It's Let's killed. just say negotiations didn't Exploit. go over well. Be and now we're the owners. Who knows how that group got them from the Brotherhood. And really, who cares? Isn't walking in and making demands exactly what you're doing with the retreat? Oh, I'm not making demands. I'm providing a service. They give me their supplies, and I let them keep their lives. Where there's prey, there will always be, be a predator. Exploit if it wasn't me, I'm sure there would be someone else ready to take advantage of them. If you have Brotherhood property, you're going to hand it over right now along with the villagers' supplies. Like I said, these weapons don't belong to the Brotherhood anymore. I don't Imagine have living in a any kid's of their weapons. And you can tell those villagers they'll be punished for crying to the Brotherhood of Steel. We could try to come up with a mutually beneficial arrangement, we could outright attack, or we could pass a strength check of 12 or greater to say, I just killed all of your people, and I'll kill you too if I have to. <laughs> well, shit. If there's one thing I value more than my goods, it's my life. Here's the key to some of our stash. Make sure you tell your people to stay out of my business from now on. With that, she backs down, and we can loot the weapons and the supplies without turning her hostile. Alternatively, we could kill her. With Dagger and her lieutenants dead, we can loot the throne room. To the right of the throne room is a shack. In here we find a skill level one locked safe, 
and a wooden crate that requires a key. Turning around and heading out, we find a cage where the other lieutenant was at, and climbing the throne, we can loot Dagger's body, whereupon we find Dagger's key. Alternatively, if we kept her alive, she simply gives us the key. Lying on a table next to her throne is Dagger's journal. We found some easy pickings down in the swamp, a bunch of idiot villagers living in the trees. We've been extorting them for supplies since we returned to Appalachia. They gave us food, ammo, chems, whatever. They pose no real threat to us, so we keep them alive and scared. Their leader is Jenny Brown, a pacifist and overall pathetic excuse for a human. We couldn't have dreamt up a more spineless coward to keep the goods coming our way. We take more and more every day. Eventually, they'll die off and we'll have ourselves a treehouse to vacation in. In the meantime, they're still useful to us. I walk away from killing these guys with few regrets. To the right of her throne are crates stamped with the Brotherhood of Steel logo. We can unlock these with Dagger's Key, whereupon we get a Brotherhood of Steel weapons cache. Then, heading back into the shack, we can use the same key to unlock a wooden crate where we find the retreat's supplies. So, these crazy missile launchers that the Blood Eagles have been using belonged to the Brotherhood? How did they get their hands on them? Could retrieving these missile launchers be the real reason the Brotherhood sent us to help the retreat? Heading back to the retreat, we pass by an epic battle between a Marlert Queen and a Mothman. I dreamed I fell out of bed and straight to the forest floor. And then we can climb the treehouse and find Jenny. Have you had a chance to pay Dagger a friendly visit? We find two options. We can say, here's your supplies. Oh, <gasps> thank you so much, sweet pea. Because of you, my people will no longer go hungry. The Brotherhood has our support and our thanks. Those raiders. Or we can say, I have your supplies and this weapon. Use it to protect your people. Oh man, this is quite a weapon. I can't wait to try this bad boy out. Thank you so much for your help. I hope the Brotherhood won't mind us having this. No matter which option we choose, once done, we can learn more about the retreat by talking again with Jenny Brown. Hey there, sunshine. How can I help you? I'd like to know more about the retreat. I'd be happy to talk about our lovely home. Why did you choose to live in a treehouse? Well, since we're higher up, we've got good sight lines all around us and are able to protect ourselves pretty well from the local uh, wildlife. <laughs> These houses were already built, too, which made it quicker for us to get set up. Besides, it makes me feel like a kid again. Why don't you live in foundation with the settlers? We don't have anything against the settlers. In fact, we often trade with them. We just want to be on our own and don't want to get wrapped up in the drama between foundation and crater. Where did you live before the retreat? We were nomadic before we came to Appalachia. It worked out well because traveling around meant finding more people to add to our family. It's about time to eat. We've grown quite a bit though, so it only made sense to set down some roots. This misty. I have some questions about Dagger. <sighs> Don't even get me started on that woman. When did she start harassing you? She sent some of her blood eagles to pretend like they wanted to be part of our community around the time that we first got set up here. After we became established and got our own stockpile of supplies, those blood eagles disappeared and must have told her that we were now a worthy target. She showed up the next day with those sons of bitches demanding a cut of our supplies. Now, we're a lot more careful about who we let in. So please forgive anyone who might be, you know, standoffish. Why aren't you able to defend yourselves? Even though we are peaceful people, we do live in this cruel world. 
and are no strangers to having to defend ourselves. Unfortunately, we just aren't able to take on Dagger and all of her crew by ourselves. There's too many of them, and they are just too powerful for us. What supplies has she been taking? I thought I'd live in a tree Food and medical supplies, primarily. Two of the most needed things in order to survive in this world, of course. We've been having to ration out our food so that everyone only gets one meal a day. That's not enough to live on, and people are starting to go hungry. I want to know more about you. You want to know about me? Wait. All right, then. Shoot. What made you gather all of these people together? I really didn't do it on purpose or anything. It just kind of happened. <laughs> you know, darling, I think a lot of people these days are just looking for some human companionship and kindness. There's enough to worry about in this world we live in, but having a family helps you carry that burden. What was your life like before the bombs fell? Well, I spent my days watching television and gossiping with my gal pals. Nothing too exciting, but boy, would I give anything to have one boring day I won't again. Let mess with this village. I had a beautiful family with two precious grandbabies. I love them bunches and bunches more than anything in this whole wide world. This family I've created will never replace them. But it helps with the loss a little bit, you know what I mean? Why did you want to come to Appalachia? Even though we were able to get by well enough traveling, we grew past the point where it wasn't sustainable anymore and we needed reliable trade. While going from place to place, we started to hear talks about people coming back to Appalachia and it seemed as good of a place as any. Plus, I got some youngins talking about starting families. Bless their hearts. Kids need all the stability that they can get in this unstable world. So it makes sense to find a place we could call home. All right, I've got to go. No worries, honey. Don't be a stranger. With our job done and the rocket launchers in hand, depending on our choice, we can head back to Fort Atlas to talk to Paladin Romani, but we arrive to observe a conversation going on between Romani and Night Shin. I have news from our patrol. They must have seen something Greetings, quite initiate. interesting for you to come to me about it. Interesting is not the word. Concerning, yes. One moment, Initiate. Night Shin is in the middle of his report. Go on, Shin. As I was saying, one of our patrols came across a raider storeroom. They were chased out, but not before sighting several crates with the Brotherhood insignia on them. Those crates are for important assets. We haven't used them since... Since that battle, let's not waste time with details. Considering the contents, it's imperative that we recover those crates from the raiders. We have yet to establish a relationship with the people of Crater. It's possible that they are more agreeable than the other raiders we've encountered. Are you seriously considering the idea of leaving those items in raider hands? Let's discuss this later. We've kept the Initiate waiting long enough. Were you able to help the people of the retreat? Dagger is dead, and I gave the supplies back to the retreat. Very unfortunate that things had to end that way, but at least the villagers are safe now. Them, and likely many others. The world is better off with fewer blood eagles. So much to teach us. Don't speak so frivolously of human life, Knight. Oh, is there anything else to report? Dagger also had a crate of Brotherhood weapons. I confiscated them from her and brought them all back. The blood eagles too. Did these crates have our insignia on them? If our weapons have spread among multiple groups, that's a serious problem. The Initiate made the right choice in bringing them back to us. I hope the villagers have other means of defending themselves. If we address the threat at its origin, there would be no need for them to defend themselves, which is exactly why we can't leave those weapons in Raider hands. Or we can say, Dagger also had a crate of Brotherhood weapons. I gave one to the retreat so they could use it to defend themselves. The Blood Eagles too. Did these crates have our insignia on them? 
If our the weapons have spread among multiple groups, that's a serious problem. One that the Initiate has exacerbated with their ill-advised handout. I support the Initiate's decision. The villagers will not use that weapon with ill intent. One weapon isn't likely to cause a crisis, but the Raiders have an entire cache. We can't just the leave them as is. Where did these weapons originate? We obtained them during our journey to Appalachia. Unexpected circumstances remove them from our possession. That's all the Initiate needs to know. I am the one answering questions here, Knight. Knight Shin has a history with raiders? The Brotherhood saved Shin's hometown from a raider attack. It was then that Knight Connors recruited him into the fold. There have been other incidents since then, but... This is irrelevant to the mission. Perhaps you can ask him about it another time. I'd prefer that you didn't. Understood. Good work, Initiate. You're dismissed. With that, we complete Disarming Discovery, and we get one of the missile launchers. It's called a Hellstorm Missile Launcher. The one we get isn't legendary, but it looks pretty darn cool. It does 180 damage, with a fire rate of 14, a range of 204, and an accuracy of 70. It's unique from existing missile launchers in that it can fire four missiles in quick succession. And it's classified as both an explosive weapon and a heavy gun, benefiting from both the big guns and explosive bobblehead buffs. On the side, we see the Brotherhood logo and a bunch of tick marks, as if this has been used in combat. This missile launcher has destroyed seven enemies. We then begin the quest, Property Rights. It's time for the Brotherhood to show the Raiders what belongs to whom. How exactly did all of these disparate raider groups get their hands on Brotherhood weaponry? We'll find out in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already and you still believe you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, and YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos, and access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos. Don't worry about the box.